everyone and welcome to a, another video. Um, I am going to film this one more recently than I did my last ones uh, because I was filming my wrap ups in three month chunks because I wasn't reading a lot and then I started reading a lot more and so now I've been breaking them up into individual months um, but sometimes I wait until I have time to film them all together before I upload them. Um, so I have time because it is um, August 3rd today, so I'm going to tell you the nine books that I read in the month of July. Um, so the first book I finished in the month of July, most of these, oops, most of the books that I finished in the month of July were um, library books. Um, so I will have pictures up for them. But the first book I finished was a book that I got actually... I got from the library at the end of June, right before I went on my trip for my 30th birthday, and I panicked because I didn't realize it was as big as it is, um, and it is a very popular book at the library. Uh, this is the second time I've put it on hold. The first time I put it on hold, I never got to go pick it up, and so I lost my turn um, to read it, and so this time I finally had it, and I was like, I gotta finish this, I gotta finish this, but I don't want to buy the book just to finish it. And you can't renew it because there's so many people waiting in line. But that is A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J. Mass. This is like the technically kind of fourth book in the um, A Court of Thorns and Roses series. This one is it's all the same characters, but it follows Nesta and Cassian. Um, so it's not Feyre and Rhysand's point of view. It's Nessa and Cassian's point of view, and I freaking love Cassian, like, love Cassian. As soon as he was introduced in, um, the second book, which I can't see right now because I turned my bookshelf, um, but as soon as he was finished, or as soon as he was introduced in that one, I was like, I love this character, he's my favorite, I'm sold, and, uh, at the end of the third one, of Wings and Ruin, I started to to kind of understand Nesta and enjoy Nesta a little bit more, um, but I freaking love Cassian, and so I wanted to read it. Um, I had a little bit of an issue with Sarah J. Mass's books, the last, especially the last book of, or the third book in the series of that, but this one I think did a lot better. There were some spicy scenes, but they weren't that long, and they, and they were perfectly placed for me where I could just skip to the end of that section or that little, like, chapter, uh, and then I could just keep reading and get to the good stuff, and I didn't really miss that, skip that many pages, um, but this is a lot of pages. This is, like, 700 pages. 157 pages. This is a beast of a boy. Um, but I did end up giving it four stars because I do enjoy it. I did enjoy it. I liked the, um... There's a lot of, um, f like, women or females, they keep calling them in the story, which also was a little bit irritating. The females and the males and the, like, whatever, that whole gender norm thing was weird. Um, but all of the, like, fe a lot of the females in the book have some sort of trauma that makes them distant from, like, making friends or, um, even just talking to, like, men, um, or interacting with them in any capacity other than what they're used to or even uh, like in general and like getting those women to band together and the, the women friendships that are made uh, and the sister relationships that are built on are I think done really well in this book so I really enjoyed that part of it um, because they definitely didn't have that in the other books because it was mostly Feyre was the only girl mentioned in any of those books or like that had a significant part there was obviously other women mentioned but she was the only one who had like op like a significant part and so I really liked the aspect of like introducing all these other female characters and kind of giving their backstories and that was something I really enjoyed about this um but again I gave it four stars the three words I used to describe it was Cassian with a smiley face sisterhood with a smiley face and mental health because there's a lot of like trauma and that kind of stuff, and Nesta's dealing with, like, PTSD and things like that that you have to deal with. Um, 
I said I only read it for Nesta and because I love Cassian. I skipped the spicy scenes and enjoyed more. The girl power is amazing. I wrote again the battles are small but there's enough of like spicy or like um like innuendo jokes there's a lot of that and the battles are really small which is I also was okay with because I'm not a big like battle like battle scene reader like they don't I don't in my head I'm just like did they win or did they lose like that's the way in my head that I picture it so that was fine with me um I did skip the spicy scenes and I enjoyed it a lot more because of that, but I really loved the girl power and the sisterhood that was involved, and I freaking love Cassian, so anything with Cassian, I will read. Um, the next book that I finished was also a library book, and it was actually one my roommate got from the library and then let me read because we can read them in a day, and it was Heartstopper Volume 3 by Alex Oseman, um, graphic novel. I obviously can't say much about this book because it's the third book in the series uh, but this is the it like the first two books like the first season of the show on Netflix is um, like the events of the first two books mostly um, there's a little bit in the second book I think that's not like there's some things that aren't in the show but mostly that's where it is uh, and then the book three is kind of like after that, so I really can't tell you anything. Um, but it's a graphic novel. I give it five stars. I wrote Gay, Adorable, and Awkward. Um, I love Charlie and Nick. So many gay characters and so much... cuteness. Also awkward teenage hormones, because it's awkward teenage hormones. One thing that I've noticed about British stories, as opposed to or TV shows or anything, um, as opposed to American shows, is there's just their, like, I don't want to say crass because that has, like, a negative connotation to it, but just their, like, blunt way of, like, saying things like they are and being like, yes, this happens. And, like, it makes me, as an American, feel slightly uncomfortable, and I'm fully, like, I understand, like, puberty happens and, like, like, that's not what makes me uncomfortable. It's more so because I'm not used to seeing it on TV. Like, the idea of them putting it on TV or talking about it in a book or on TV is not, like, good for you, great. Like, it's not, that's not the part that makes me uncomfortable. It, um, like, the, the topic itself doesn't make me uncomfortable. It's that I'm just not used to seeing it in that space um, and addressed in that way that it's, like, it makes you uncomfortable but in a good way like like it's something that like I am uncomfortable because it's not usual like I'm not used to reading it or seeing it um, whereas if I had probably grown up in England or in the UK I would probably more com like it would be just more normal the way that they do it um, and I've watched some British TV shows and that has been the same case where there's just like things where I'm like we would not like the rating on this would be very different in America and it's great like it needs to be there and the way it's written and done is very great it's just like it takes a minute <laughs> to get used to so if you are American and you don't read a lot of British books or watch a lot of them just have that in mind that it might make you uncomfortable for a good reason like because of the like because it's just different than the way we would address it um, the next book I read, book number three, is um, a book, a series I'm finishing. I don't think the next book is out in the series yet, but it is Witch Shadow, number four. It's the, like, Truth Witch, Witchlands series by um, Susan Dennard. I just wrote Susa Dennard. I didn't even finish her name. Um, by Susan Dennard. I started this series when I got it in a young adult subscription box back in 2017. And then I last summer read books two, three, and then the um, like 3.5 book, uh, like the little novella that goes with it, which you kind of have to read to like continue on. I think it's actually 2.5, and then I read book three. 
um, and then I didn't have time to get to four, but I think that's the last book that's out in the series currently, book four. Um, it did come out in 2021, so, you know. Um, did it really? Uh, but it is, I gave it three and a half stars, um, because I didn't really enjoy it as much as I enjoyed the other ones. I freaking love Aiden, and he kind of took a back seat in this book, so I think that was part of it. Um, and there was like some time jumps, like especially at the beginning, where it was like, it's like current times where they're separated, and then it goes back in time to when they were together, because like at the end of the book three, they were together. Um, and there was just some like jumping around that happened where I was like, huh? I'm confused. I'm so confused. And then like you have to go back and like piece together the like time jump parts. It was a, bit, a little bit confusing, but it was okay. Uh, I described this book in Fighting, Friendship, and Found Family, which I really liked the Fs, the like the alliteration there that came with it. Um, I said lots of confusing parts about old and current characters. The old one possessing the new but the names mean nothing to me oh yeah so there was like characters from like the olden times that were using the like current characters bodies as hosts um but i don't either i don't remember enough or i don't think it did as good of a job explaining at least in my brain as i would have liked to understand but the names of like who these care like who these old-timey characters were meant nothing to me so they're like oh my gosh you're so and so and I was like don't know who that is don't know if I'm supposed to know are they important are they powerful I'm so confused um, so that was a little bit throw off -y. like it threw me off a little bit um, the next book I read was Heartstopper number four by Alice Oseman graphic novel four and a half stars this one is four and a half stars um, this is the not final book. There's going to be another one, but it's not out yet. Um, book in the series. This one is, uh, I wrote Mental Health, Family Dynamics, and Eating Disorder. Uh, so trigger warnings for those. It deals with characters' mental health. There were parts that were so real and relatable that I didn't want to read it. Um, and there was things where it talked about not wanting help because it's harder etc. There's a lot of that that was like really hit home, um, which is why I only gave it four and a half stars because there was a lot of parts where I was like, this is too real to read. This is a lot for me. I wasn't in the right headspace for this, but it only took me a day. Like it takes me like two out, like an hour and a half. So, you know, it's whatever. Um, the next book I read, oh, I can hold it up because I have it here. Uh, the next three books I have here. Uh, and the next one is Heaven Officials Blessing by Mosheng Tong Shu. This is book three in the Heavenly Officials Blessing series. This book came out, um, they didn't release, did they release a book in June? I can't remember, but they like missed a month, um, where one of them was supposed to come out and it didn't, so then they doubled up and they sent us two in July. So this one came out at the beginning of July, uh, and so I got it and I read it how many days? Let's see. I wrote July 12th through July 20th, so it took me a little bit longer than I thought it took eight days to read it. But this is also a beast of a book. This is 415 pages. Um, I also was working summer school during those times, so I was going to work during the day, um, whereas with some of the other books I didn't have to go to work during the day. Uh, I went to work during the day with this, and I finished it, like, early in the morning, like, 1 o'clock a.m. on the 20th, so it really only took me, like, seven days to read it, like, a week, um, but yeah, I highly enjoyed this book, and then my roommate got theirs also, like, the next day or a day after me, and started reading it, and I read it before them, so it's really cool. I'm gonna give this to my friend, but my friend has, like, four of my books already. Uh, and so I'm waiting for them to finish. Loved it, obviously. I love these two. Hua Chong is like becoming my new favorite. Um, but 
I, of course, gave it five stars. Uh, the genre is Danme or Shansha. I wrote for those three descriptive words, I wrote oblivious, awkward, and sneaky. Um, the characters are just oblivious. There's a lot of, like, awkward situations that they get into where, like, even just this one on the cover, like, the way the pictures are is not how the, like, it's not what's actually happening, like, the way the picture looks. There's another one, I think. Let me see if I can find Yeah, or like this one, like, if, if you just looked at the pictures, you would think something else happened, and a lot of the other characters, like, just walk into that and, like, see something else happening, uh, so there's, like, a lot of awkward situations. And then sneaky, there's a lot of, like, sneaking around that's going on. Um, I wrote, there's more secrets that aren't secrets, some awkward positions. Shilion being oblivious as always because he is always being oblivious so I wrote that I put that one in there um, the next book I have I actually read it as a library book but I did buy it if you watched my July um, collective haul you will know what book I'm talking about but that is Once Upon a K Prom by Kat Cho um, I've been following um, the this author's Instagram like this like book release story for a while like before it was even released um, I really liked it. Um, Axie O, who wrote The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea and XOXO, which I loved. And Gloria Chow, author of American Panda and Rent a Boyfriend, all, which I also loved. Um, they've been hyping it up as well. Uh, so I was really excited about it. I believe this is, is this her debut? This is her first, like, K-pop debut book. She's written other books, but this is, like, the first one she wrote about, like, a K-pop story. Um, basically, this is the first one I can really, like, talk about, talk about. Um, but basically, the main character, Elena, uh, has always felt like a side character in her own life because she has a twin brother and a bunch of older siblings, and she's kind of, like, she feels like she's, like, the forgotten child because her sisters were all so much more popular and her family finally got their like boy token boy that they wanted and so her brother Ethan is like more popular than she is and she is um working to they call it the anti-prom campaign but really she's more anti-excess where she wants people to donate some of the money that they would be spending for prom to the community center that she works at and is currently going broke um and so she's not interested in prom. Um, and the only thing she can think about prom is that she and her friend, when they were like 10 or 12, her best friend, they made a pact that they would go to prom together. Well, her best friend, Robbie, moved away that same year to Korea and is now the maknae of one of the biggest global K-pop boy bands in the group or in the, you know, in the K-pop world. And he randomly shows up at her doorstep trying to fulfill his promise to take her to prom. And she's trying to deal with, like, his being famous and is it all just a trick for him being famous? He's trying to deal with his, like, feelings but also being famous and trying to figure out dating, um, if that's allowed sort of thing, and it's very cute. There's some wholesome moments in here. There's also some, like, really real moments of, like, yes, yeah, that's something you need to address. There's, um, she grows as a person, which I was so thankful for because she, there were some decisions she made or things that she said that just kind of annoyed the crap out of me. I was like, come on, get it together, Elena. Um, there's also things that he said and did that he grew from. Um, it deals a lot with the, like, culture of being a celebrity, especially, um, a Korean celebrity, because I f they're a lot more restricted than, like, American celebrities would be in terms of, like, dating and scandals and things like that. Um, and the idea of 
Elena, who's always been kind of under the radar, never really in the spotlight, trying to navigate, now being in the spotlight for maybe bad or good, like, some people have good reviews and some people have bad reviews, so there's a lot of that going on. Um, it's very cute. I really loved it. I gave it five stars. It's super adorable. Um, I wrote, describe this book in three words. I wrote K-pop, friendship, and secrets. Uh, I wrote cute baby Robbie because Robbie's adorable. I love Robbie. Um, Ethan and Elena are precious together. That's the, the twins. And the community center is adorable as well. Uh, I did like, she does have, um, if the back of this book, or the back of the dusk jacket from this book has pictures of the other boy group members. There's five of them. Um, they are hilarious. I freaking love them so, so much. Um, her friends are great. His friends are great. I think it's funny. It's amazing. Uh, and the last book, not the last book I read, but the last book that I have physically also here is, um, Sock Hill Girls by Claire Legrand. This book I got from my roommate for Christmas, um, as a Christmas present. And, uh, this is a very interesting book. I really enjoyed it. It's about three girls who, um, live on this place called Sock Hill. Um, one of them just moves to town, but there is this thing that happens every so often where teenage girls go missing and nobody knows what happens to them. They live on this like island and they can't find their bodies, they can't find them, they have no trace of what happened to them. And the three main characters, Val, Marion, and Zoe. Marion has just moved here with her mom and her sister. Zoe's dad is the police chief and Zoe's best friend was the most recent girl to go missing and she blames Val who is suspicious and strange and her friends started hanging out with Val and then all of a sudden disappeared. Um, and so she finds it quite strange. And then while they're happening, it, like, it affects Marion as well. Uh, they have some, there's a lot to go through in this book. Um, they basically have to band together and stop this from ha like figure out what's happening and stop this from happening. Um, it's kind of spooky, true crimey, um, like mystery, like murder mystery. -y. It's quite good. Uh, there's a lot of like weird parts, but it works with the story and it makes sense. Um, the three words I used to describe it, I gave it four and a half stars. The three words I used to describe it, LGBTQ. Um, two of the girls here are lesbians, um, and one of the characters is asexual, so some LGBTQ friendly stuff. There is monsters and magical. There's magic and monsters in this book as well. Also great. Um, I wrote asexual character. One, yeah, one of the three main girls is asexual, which is another reason why my roommate bought this for me, um, because I love some asexual representation up in here. Uh, I did enjoy the story of the strong girls standing up to the men. A little whiny, but they are 17. So they are 17 year old girls having to deal with things that they should not have to deal with at 17. So there were some whiny bits or some like immature bits, but they're 17 to be expected, going through a lot, trauma, a lot of things. Um, there is moments, especially towards the end, where they have to stand up to the men that are trying to like get them to do this thing or tell them how to do it the way that they um and they don't believe that's the way they should have to do it so i do i do like that um and the monster takes on physical forms and tends to take on forms physical forms of men but doesn't necessarily have a gender because it's a monster um but i do love that these three teenage girls are standing up to adult men it makes me really happy um, the next two books I have are library books, uh, that I finished as well. Um, the first one is Soulmates by Jen Frederick. This is the second book in her 
like duology about Seoul. The first one was called Heart and Seoul, but spelled like Seoul, Korea. Um, so this takes place right after that last one left off. I can't tell you any of the plot. Don't read the synopsis if you plan on reading the series because it does spoil the ending of the first book. I made that mistake, but I was almost to the end, so it didn't really... It did spoil it, but it didn't really. So I keep doing that to myself. Don't do it. I'm telling you, don't do it. Uh, the three words I used to describe this book was confusion, stubborn, and um, chable slash rich, slash rich people. Uh, because you have to deal a lot with like rich people and family expectations and being um, like the family of rich people, like belonging to rich people and never having grown up in that. Um, I gave it four stars. I wrote weird. Um, I can't read this because that would be like their relationship stuff is weird. If you read the book or if you have read the book um, or if you finish the first one, you'll know kind of why. But their relationship is like weird but not weird at the same time there's societal expectations to be met slash and judgy family members because um hara is grew up in an american family but she is full korean um and so there's a lot of they talk about like the familial expectations and the repercussions of the relationship that they have with their family uh and there's a lot of judgy family members and she wants her stepdad to support her. Uh, I was okay with the ending. It was not the ending I was expecting, but I didn't see that, like, scenario. I didn't see it as an option until they gave it as an option, and I was like, oh, okay, I'm okay with this option. That's a fine option. Um, yeah, so I'm okay with that ending. All right, I have one more book to talk about, and then I'll do my little, like, end of the month wrap-up. The last book I finished in the month of July was Boyfriend Material by Alexis Hall. I really enjoyed this book so much. At first I didn't think I was going to enjoy it. I loved it a lot. It's like a BL romance. Um, I gave it five stars. The description is that Luke or Lucien, I think is how the British would pronounce it, because they make a joke about Lu don't pronounce it Lucian like the Americans um, but he goes by Luke he is the son of like a kind of washed out rock star dad and his mom who used to write story uh, used to write songs for his dad um, and his dad has kind of fallen off the kind of fallen off the radar but is now a reformed man and so he gets put in the newspapers for like anything he like drinks at parties and falls down in the gutter and so there's a big scandal story and his work that is like un doesn't seem like a glamorous work where he works for like protecting the dung beetles or whatever they have lost a bunch of really important donors because they saw his name in the newspaper and so his boss basically gives him an ultimatum that says like you can either get fired or you can get your act together and like get this publicity under control and he's like is it because I'm gay and they're like not really but it like kind of is um, and so he decides to fake date which is one of my favorite tropes um, to get a fake boyfriend enter Oliver Blackwood who comes and becomes his fake boyfriend who is a barrister which is kind of like a lawyer um, and they sort of fake date and like all fake dating tropes kind of fall in love uh, but there's a lot of like they help each other and they react in certain ways that are maybe not the most mature or appropriate but they help each other through them and work through it together uh i wrote fake dating which i love sass they are so sassy i love them so much and mental health it talks a lot about mental health and um when to ask for help and how to kind of get yourself out of that funk uh i wrote so much uh sarcasm and sass so much self-deprecation talk there's a lot of self-deprecation talk so if that's not something you're into uh, maybe don't read this uh, they both have things to work on they're both opposites and i love his mom and his friends so much they are so funny um yeah i think you should just go check it out there is a sequel coming out this month called august called husband material so
Um, anyway, my monthly wrap up, I read nine books this month. Um, my top read of the month was Boyfriend Material. My new favorite character is Robbie Choi from Once Upon a K-Prom and Oliver from Boyfriend Material. New to me author was Kat Cho and Alexis Hall. And pages read this month, I read 3,894 pages. Uh, my rankings of my books, number one was Boyfriend Material, number two was Heaven's Official, number three. Uh, third was Once Upon a K-Prom, fourth was Heartstopper, number four. Fifth was Soulmates, six was Heartstopper, number three. Seven was Sawkill Girls, eight was A Court of Silver Flames, and nine was Witch Shadow. I wrote <laughs> so many interesting surprises read and loved this month. And then I have a quote from Sock Hill Girls here, and then I have another, a couple quotes I will also read because they were also very good. Um, but this one from Sock Hill Girls says, You are a small girl, and you are a small girl, and you are a small girl. You are mighty. You are one and one and one. You are fragile. You can move mountains. You are breakable. You will never break. This power is mine. And now it is yours too. You must keep fighting. You must never stop fighting. From Sock Hill Girls. It's a very powerful statement there. And then I have boop boop boop. Two quotes. I have one from Boyfriend Material and one from Soulmates. Let me read the Soulmates one first. It says, um, I found that home is not a city or state or country or even a continent. I don't belong because of the shape of my eyes the way I pronounce about or gamawa, or whether I wear stripes or polka dots, but because of the people I belong to. I allowed myself to be vulnerable here, or maybe being here stripped away my defenses. Either way, people found their way into my heart, and I can't let them go. These people are my home. These people make up who I am and will affect who I will be in the future. I love this place. So that's like her kind of accepting that she's different but figuring out like what makes it a home whether or not it's a place you grew up or even a place that you fit in all the time sort of thing and then the boyfriend material quote says John Fleming which is his dad had gone from being this idea I'd grown up with to a real person to an idea again and while that hurt my life was already healing around him Oliver, though, was a whole different kettle of messy, f of misery fish. He'd helped me see that my life was better than I thought it was. That I was better than I thought I was. And I could hold on to that, even if I couldn't hold on to him. So there's that, like, sense of... They made each other better. Like, Oliver helped him see what he needed to see about himself. Oliver treated him differently than anybody he'd ever treated him and built up his mental health and really helped him. And he said that, like, even if I can't hold on to Oliver, even if we're not going to be together, I can remember the things he taught me and the way he made me feel, and I can give that to myself every day, which was so powerful. I thought that's so important. These characters are, like, 27, 28-ish, I think. They're like late 20s, and so it was very, as someone who just turned 30, like it was such a powerful message to receive of like, the people that help you feel this way, like they don't always have to be next to you helping you feel this way. You can just remember how they made you feel and learn these things, and even if you don't get to be together all the time, like take that with you, like don't let that it was basically like don't let it spiral you out of control again like don't let it control you but anyway those were the nine books I read this month in July um, make sure to like this video if you enjoyed it uh, comment down below what your favorite reads were for the month of July or if, uh, any of the books I talked about if you want to know more information or if I said something wrong um, uh, also let me know that down below in the comments and make sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!